The Eston Cottage Hospital was founded by the company in 1884 and maintained with weekly subscriptions from both the miners and the steel workers. It originally boasted just 22 beds and seven staff, but was nevertheless a major improvement on the previous arrangement when the injured worker's humble cottage became a makeshift operating theatre. But if you were on night duty, of course, you could see the miners coming down the hills because the seam would stop where the accident was and they would carry the, the, uh, the patient down the, the hills with all the miners' lamps on. So therefore you saw it coming. So you got the hot water bottles in the bed, in, in the ward, side ward, accident ward, ready for them coming. And the kettle's boiling for hot drinks for the miners. And I remember the, the uh, one poor man, I was on night duty at the time, and he was killed. Uh, they called him Mr Bates. And they didn't bring him in because he was already dead. And they just laid him on the stretcher outside the mortuary door. And all the, this, they put all the miners' lamps round him. It was a most impressive sight. I can picture to this day his big working boots sticking out from the bottom of the blanket that covered him. And his head was practically knocked into his shoulders. Very, very sad. Very sad. Eston was a little community on its own. Very, very close-knit. They even had a, a, a dialect of their own. You mm. could tell, yes, oh yes. The California people were uh, really uh, countryfied in their dialect. Mm. There's no comparison today as the poverty then. I mean, a widow didn't get anything at all. Nothing from the government. She'd take washing in and things like that. They'd do a day's washing for half a crown, two and six, even though she had children. Oh, there's no comparison, dear. At Eston School, the Miners' Union gave out parcels of boots sent by sympathetic comrades in Russia. And the school itself became a lifeline. And they used to make soup, daily soup. And the poor children used to go home, get a basin or a jug, and they used to get a basin of soup, a slice of bread and a slice of corned beef. Pancrack was called the Parish Relief was the real name, was Parish Relief. And they didn't get money. They'd get a voucher for food. And they had to go to a certain shop and buy the, the groceries with, the, with this money. And mm. that was called the Pancrack. How we got the name, I don't know. The, say, he's the means test man coming. And, and whoever, uh, 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 say my sister's husband, she'd, he'd run out in the, on the back way and go into somebody else's house. They'd come into a ho anybody's home and say, you can sell that. Or you can sell that. Anything you had in the home that was sellable, you had to sell it to live on. It was, it was really... Very, very, that's why people today don't know they're born. It was a place of work for many, a means of salvation for many more, and a playground for all. The Eston Hills were the great provider. Everyone went up the hills. Good Friday, Easter Monday, it was absolutely covered with people. They used to take their violins, their accordions, and us children used to take our skipping ropes, and we used to go right to the top, and we used to bathe in the sheep dip, paddle in the sheep dip. Did you? Yes. We used to get invitations to go to the village dance. 
and we meet our boyfriends at the uh, church hall, Aston Church Hall, but we had a policeman to escort us home, matron's orders. Our boyfriends weren't allowed to take us back to the hospital, and many a time those policemen were 50 times worse than our own boyfriends would have been. <laughs>